have just released digital.ai deploy 10.1. This is the stitch by example de demo. So it, with the release of digital AI 10.1, we've actually also included a community repo that has some stitch by example uh, examples of rules. And so you can actually check these out and use it. I'm going to cover a couple of them today. We're gonna to talk about Kubernetes and AWS using Terraform. Okay, so here's our digital.ai deploy tool, and we're going to open up the deployment canvas. And so I'm going to deploy this uh, app Zero to Hero, and we're going to drag that over to our deployment canvas, and then we're going to deploy to our test environment. So, at, and we can preview this. So as you'd expect, when we do this, we'll see that we have a number of steps that deploy does, adds to us, to this for us. So this is our usual sort of declarative model for deployment. And then we also have available to us a stitch preview. And what the stitch preview is gonna show us is what rules were, were applied during that deployment. So for example, I have, resize this a little bit. We have uh, uh, a you know, pet clinic zero to hero deployment. We have a thing where we add some, some macros to this. So here's our, our macros. Uh, we're gonna cha maybe change the replica size. Well, it turns out that we're not changing the replicas here because it's one replica to one. And then we also have the CPU memory that we want to change. So we're going to give it one CPU and 512. So those were some rules that were applied when we deployed it to this environment. But I can take those very, that very same deployment artifact and drag in our production environment. So this will be a little bit different. And so as an infrastructure engineer, I might want to be able to control what things I actually get deployed, what resources get allocated to a Kubernetes thing when I deploy it there. So we still have our declarative deployment model, looks just the same as it did before. And now when we look at the stitch rules, we'll see that uh, some things have changed. So for example, we have this, the labels here, we actually add production in here now instead. We, our replicas went from one to two, and we actually added a container port here. So we've, we've changed the container port from 8081 80, to, uh, 90, 90, and now we've added some resource limits to two CPUs and 2488 of, of memory. So we can actually act, add these things, but, and you know, you can do this with some other tools for Kubernetes, but what you can't do, and, and one of the things that deploy is really good at now is I can actually use the same sort of rules engine to deploy things to, with, with Terraform. So I got my Terraform environment here. And so as a guy that's building Terraform scripts, I might build them and, and target them to uh, a one VPC, for example. But when I actually release those as templates to be deployed to different environments to set different pieces of infrastructure up, I might actually want to change, for example, the VPC that we deploy it to. So of course, I still have my declarative model here where we, we drag it over here and it figures out the deployment plan. If we look at our stitch preview, what we'll see now is that I actually have a rule here that's going to show me that, hey, I want to change the, the VPC. So uh, I actually did that on the fly with stitch rules. So this is actually kind of cool stuff. And of course, I can actually have my infrastructure and engineers for, for Terraform building their stitch rules, and I can have the, the Kubernetes guys building theirs. And as a developer, I don't really care. I just you know want to get stuff into the field. So that's our, our an example of how we can actually use uh, stitch with a couple things like Kubernetes and Terraform. So thank you for uh, watching my demo today.